I was sent a cutting this evening about Paula Venels. She was the CEO of the post office, if you recall, uh, during the period when Alan Bates was fighting with the postmasters and sub-postmistresses for their freedom. And she was nevertheless imposing this draconian, Victorian-style defense of the post office in the uh, light of all this evidence coming to um, uh, coming to the courts and she battened down the hatches and she was a a vicar she had to resign from that job and you would have thought looking at the Alan Bates versus the post office drama that she retired into obscurity and put her head down and um, and that was it but no What's extraordinary is she she then went on to uh, take a senior role in the Imperial College Healthcare NHS Trust, and that that, that might have gone smoothly, except that questions were raised about her appointment and about the dodginess of the information trickling out about the her her involvement in the post office limited scandal and a very carefully prepared statement was made by imperial college and it turns out that allegedly there were uh, a board members were consulted before it was put out board members including presumably her and so we've got the excoriating court judgments on the one hand issued after Venel's appointment as the chair of the Imperial College Healthcare and the, the, the High Court talking about the mid-Victorian factory owner's attitude towards and treatment of po post sub-postmasters and the extraordinary baseless and unsuccessful attempt to boot the High Court trial judge off the case. And all of this under Paula Venel's watch. Anyway, in the end, Paula Venel's was forced to resign from that uh, job on the NHS Trust. But it, it, it makes you think, how can people go from, how can people go from under a cloud leaving under a cloud to another high-profile job for which they have no apparent experience except they've had a previous high-profile job anyway. It doesn't seem to matter whether uh, a CEO has, has come from being CEO of collecting stamps to uh, CEO of an NHS trust. <laughs> Is somebody saying that she has knowledge of medicine? No. She has knowledge of how to run a trust into the ground. Hmm. I presume that sentence would, 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 would should continue like that. Maybe it doesn't. But her only ability seems to be to manage or control or whatever, whatever vicious interpretation of that form of verb you want to um, impose. I, I use the term vicious as opposed to vice, as opposed to um, virtuous, because I, I, I cannot see Paula Vanels as somebody who has exuded virtue in her public career. Maybe she is virtuous in private, but in public, she has stimulated, encouraged viciousness. What was she doing in an NHS trust? It's as if all these people move from one senior position to another, uh, commanding these huge figure salaries, £400,000 or whatever, payouts here, payouts there, as if they deserve it simply by existing. They have no credibility in the system, 
their credibility is their reputation uh, for simply having been in the job, not for even doing the job well. I think we need to seriously question how the, the, the top part of our um, businesses work because there's something wrong with it. There's something seriously wrong with it when, when you have NHS trusts controlled by people who have nothing to do with medicine or don't know what they're talking about. And then there's a problem and all they want to do is get rid of the problem. They don't want to address the problem. They don't want to make the NHS trust or the system work better. The only driving concern of Paula Venel's and her cohorts of doom in the post office saga was to silence the whistleblowers, was to silence the people who were victims of a faulty system. It was to pretend that system was working. So, you know, when people go off to have operations and um, put their trust in an NHS trust controlled by Paula Venels, or people who have a background like Paula Venels in control, because that's the only thing, that's the only thing, surely, that is common. Control. Managing bureaucracy so that what you read is not necessarily what happened. Isn't that called deceit? Isn't that called manipulation? Isn't that called bullying? I don't know I don't know quite how we juggle the reality and and how how Venels, all the people who have employed Venels, can escape criticism for her failings, for their failings. Um, did Imperial College Healthcare NHS Trust um, get the directors, including Paula Venels, to adjust the statement on the 14th of January 2021? That, that's a question that needs to be answered, as much as the questions that need to be answered about Paula Venel's involvement with the Horizon software. It's just one thing after another. And it's extraordinary. You know, I can't say that there's any um there's any crime being committed. Why 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 would I even want to go that far? But there are questions that need to be answered. And the biggest question is why was somebody who left under a cloud taken on by a trust that ordinary people should trust? And that doesn't make any sense. And if it's happened in this case, how many other cases does it routinely happen? Now, you can talk about glad handing, you can talk about some sort of uh, Masonic cabal. I don't think that works in this case, because Paula Venels presumably is not a Mason, uh, unless she belongs to some sort of female Mason uh, group. They exist. But I think it's just the pattern of success which speaks louder than any sort of results that she may have had, any sort of um, positive feedback that may have been given. It's simply that aura of success which comes with the size of the salary. And maybe that's all to do with it. Maybe it's got very little to do with what people like Venels bring to the table. It's what they take from the petty cash. It's what they take as a salary 
that dictates whether or not they have any credibility. So if I if I started saying, oh yeah, my my salary should be enormous, maybe <laughs> maybe that chutzpah is precisely what is needed to rise in this strange, corrupted world. It it's astonishing, quite astonishing, and. I don't understand how it works. If, if, if somebody in the comments section can tell me how it works, how does somebody like Paula Vernals go from being the shamed boss of Post Office Limited to being the boss of an NHS trust? Should we now not question whether any of the bosses of NHS trusts have legitimacy, competence, or are they just simply there because they command large salaries and no one dares to question whether they're worth it? Is that the issue? <laughs>